Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now, some of you may have seen the preview video that I did of Ace Assist Republic of Gamers RTX 1490 Matrix a week or so ago. I had to take it down though because uh, Asus didn't want me showing you too much before the deadline. Uh, I did get green lit to be able to do it in the first place. A, a preview was agreed, but they have then changed their mind and it had to disappear. So that video is now live again. If you'd like to take a look and I'll uh, add it in the comments, but it's the last video that went live before this one. But we're here to talk about the matrix. So it's the uh, RTX 4090 matrix. This is going to come above the Strix. It's going to come above the Strix LC. Although it has been some time since I've actually seen any retailers with Strix LCs in stock. Although I did manage to find Strix 4080s and 4090s in stock when I looked just a minute ago, because I have literally just looked. Now you can find the normal Strix 4090 from about £1,900. Uh, you can find Strix 4090s in white from around 2150, 2200. The uh, matrix is going to come in around the 2900 pound mark. Asus is saying, and I have literally just heard, and it's 10 a.m. on launch day, uh, they're saying around the uh, 2900, 2950 pound mark. They actually said 2913 may go a little bit north it's going to depend on what happens with distributors and uh, the prices that the retailers want to set when they eventually go into stock it is their absolute top end flagship graphics card though matrixes always have been uh, they've never been 2900 pounds but i do remember times with the old matrices but more really the mars and the uh aries is they all come in big flight cases and crazy packaging uh, but they always carried an aggressive premium um cost of living obviously not great but since the pandemic prices have all basically gone up globally for everything uh now that's not an excuse the the price is uh it does make you gasp um and uh, i will talk to you about comparisons with uh other aio graphics cards uh when we sort of like talk in the conclusion and the performance and stuff but first and foremost the box that it comes in is probably about twice as thick as you would have expected for a normal um graphics card when you do slide it off and open the box though it kind of opens up um, like a, a very well wrapped present and it all splits itself down and I'm going to be using sections from the original uh, preview that I did of the box and then it is all nestled away inside now it's very cleverly nestled away inside there's lots of foam the graphics sorry the radiator itself is underneath the radiator is 35 mil thick now this in itself is something that you need to think about. If the radiator's 35 mil thick, add 25 mil for the fan, you're at 60 millimeters for the overall thickness of the radiator and the fans. Now, with the layout that you can see that I have here, uh, I've put it in the roof. Now, the reason why I have done that is to make sure the heat is being exhausted straight out the top. If you're gonna be using this for gaming, which I'm gonna assume that most of you are, the majority of the heat from your system is going to be the graphics card. So there is going to be a, uh, an argument for having cold air bringing in, but then it's going to dump all the warm air to the rest of the components in the case, can actually warm the frame of the graphics card itself up. And uh, I would personally want my CPU uh, um, air coming in that little bit warmer there rather than the graphics card air because the difference is going to be night and day and as you'll see when we talk about the temps i might as well just bring it up now we've not done the uh, technical stuff yet but the temperatures are actually very very strong um, and you need to remember that was tested with this config i fixed the front fans to 1000 rpm 
uh, consistently. So that's 1000 RPM and those fans are cooling the CPU uh, and then blowing the warm air in, which then gets sucked up into the radiator and those temperatures were still like that. This is definitely the optimal uh, way of doing things if you don't want everything else getting warmed up in. Now I did say I hadn't talked about everything else and we do need to talk about the technical specifications for this. And uh, when you split everything down, you can see that you've got the back plate and you've got that lovely PCB. Now I do have a very nice uh, image of the PCB that I can show you quickly. Uh, and it does show you the capacitors, uh, the Dr. Moss power stages, the, uh, the chokes, and you can see all of the technical stuff down the side. Now I've only just recently got this uh, unwatermarked deck to be able to show you, which is another reason why I am um, doing this so late, but it should give you an idea of the build quality of the actual PCB itself. And you can see that it does look quite small as well. Uh, and when it's in the system, it is significantly smaller than the Strix itself, which is the reason why I have a Strix here, just so that I can show you. You can see that it is noticeably smaller. Now the overall size of the matrix is going to stand you under 300 millimeters. It's 280, whereas a normal Strix is 360. So it's 80 millimeters short. That's it's 80 mil shorter. Oh my days, that's crazy. It's 80 mil shorter than a standard air-cooled Strix. Now underneath the hood, and the reason why it is so much shorter is the fact that it has that custom water block. And we'll show you that in a bit better in a minute. But you've got the back plate, you've then got the, um, the PCB itself, which is Asus's Auto Extreme technology, which basically means it's built by robots. And it's up to you how you think about that. But anyway, you can see then the uh, larger uh, copper plate, which um, I'll show you again in another slide the hollow chamber and then that large metal frame around the outside. Now that is a chunk of aluminium uh, and it is quite thick as well. It's about five mil thick. Um, you can see over here about the liquid uh, metal and then the difference between the performance mode and the quiet mode. I just run mine in the performance mode. But here you can see the differences between the um, plates. So you've got the copper plate which covers uh, everything that's making heat on the PCB. So it's covering the uh, MOSFETs, it's covering the memory, and it's covering the actual die itself. Whereas with the Strix one, it would have just been covering the GPU core. Uh, so you can see that it's significantly larger. One of the cool things as well is it does show you a little map when you use the software, which again, I'll talk to you in a minute, to show you what the temperatures are scattered around as well. Here you can get a better look at the pump and it is different to the um, Strix model as well. So it's, it's not just a Strix in a different uh, dress. They, they've done uh, a lot more work on it. As you can see, it's, uh, they've done a lot of work under the hood. Uh, they, we need to talk about uh, clocks because I'm actually allowed to talk to you about them now. When uh, you get the card though, one of the things I would implore you to do is download the GPU Tweak 3 software. I know it's bloatware and it shouldn't work the way it does. I genuinely wish that you could make changes in the software, save it and then close it and it wouldn't have to open every time that you started your system. You can set it to start minimise so you don't have to see it, but you do need to do it. When you first get it out of the box as well, you do need to go into the settings. If you want to uh, it load every time with overclock settings or fan settings or something like that, and click in the settings to uh, save the last known settings. Otherwise, every time you restart, it goes back to normal. The reason why you want to use the software though, first and foremost, is you need to tick OC mode. Um, it's free performance basically. It comes in a generic mode. The uh, little BIOS switch on the card itself is really just for the fans. It's not going to make any other difference to performance. Uh, well, it can make a difference to performance, but because the cooling is so good, it won't. And 
um, effectively by switching it into OC mode, you get an extra 30 megahertz basically. Uh, and uh, like I said, it's just free performance and I tested it that way. I just smashed it into OC mode and I tested it that way. When you do look at the software itself though, like I said, you see that little map, it'll tell you memory temperatures, tells you the core temperatures, um, it, and it's a better insight. It's also got a really funky little thing on the side which tells you about the cables and whether they're connected properly. Um, it will flag up red if it's not getting enough power through one of the cables. It can chuck a false positive sometimes, I've seen it a couple of times where it's gone red for a split second or it has been red and I've restarted and then it's been fine afterwards. I've only ever fitted the cable once, it's never been in and out. But if you're at home and it flags up, it, at least then you can shut your system down and have a look to make sure that you're not going to get any of those problems that were speculated in uh, the press by me, by everyone uh, at the start. So the software can be quite handy. Uh, the other thing I would uh, say to do really is set the fan profile. Uh, it will go into a passive mode from the box and the fans just won't kick in. I actually wanted my fans to stay on a little bit consistently so that there was airflow for the times that the graphics card wasn't actually doing anything. So I had my fans start low pretty much throughout but then ramp up when they would have done anyway, but it just meant that they were already spinning to keep the airflow in the case going through. And that again is just an idea for you to think about at home. <sighs> the uh, hoses are 700 mil long. They also hide the cables for the fans in the roof. Uh, and it hides the cables for the fans including the RGB and the power cables because the fans on the radiator are all controlled by the card. Uh, and annoyingly, one of the things I would like to have seen in the software was the um, Aura software built into that, just so that you don't then need to have a separate bit of software to um, control everything else. There could have been a switch to switch it off if you have other ASUS parts in your system because uh, obviously with the Aura software you can then control everything. I just had this thing where I thought it might have been nice to have at least been able to control the card or then maybe even control all of it from one place. Even if you have to have it installed separately, I think it might have been nice to have been able to have controlled it from within the GPU tweak software. It's just me being finickety, uh, but it is there's always been uh, a kind of kickback about so many different softwares and a lot of the other manufacturers out there now have one software and everything can work from within it. So for one manufacturer to have several different ones uh, and them all need a place to be ticked and gone back to, it's up to you to decide. That was just uh, my take on it. Uh, one of the things I will say as well is the lighting on it. Uh, the fans, they're fans, they're RGB fans, they're very nice, but the lighting on the card itself, they've gone to a little bit of extra effort with this and I love the way it feels. I've done it this way just because I don't test with riser cards because uh, we always test with it horizontal so it's fair for thermals and stuff like that, but this genuinely deserves to be vertically mounted so you can see inside that big aluminium frame and it, the frame does make it very nice as well because it gives you a very solid black edge around the outside. You can still see if you vertically mounted it you could still see the side of it but I do get the, the very nice subtle matrix logo on the back plate does look outstanding um, but again I, I think if it was vertically mounted you can see that uh, large side, it's just going to look so much better. But that's for you to decide at home. Oh, I need a drink of water already. We're doing so much talking about this. Now, we, when we did our testing, as I said, we did it in OC mode. Uh, I did set it up so that the fans kicked in earlier, but it was like 30% until it got to 50 degrees. And then it used the same kind of angle of trajectory for the fan speeds to ramp up. 
the CPU fans, which are technically the intake fans, were set to 1000 RPM. Uh, and we didn't turn the fans or anything up to 11 to try and make it cool any better. Uh, the one thing I will say though is there is no option to uh, be able to change the pump speed. The pump in a silent room is noticeable. I don't know whether it's a latest gen Asetek pump or not, but I've not been a personal fan of the seventh gen Asetek setups because consistently they've been uh, audible to me in a quiet room. Now, during gaming sessions with cans, music on, anything like that, you're not going to hear it. But if you had stepped away and were reading a book while you were rendering a video or something like that, no, because you'd hear other things. But anyway, uh, in a silent room, you're going to hear the pump. Even in a closed case, I could pick up on it. Um, so that was something that uh, I thought maybe have been something that you could have had a step down to have made the pump quieter. Uh, it's not uh, offensive, it's not intrusive, it is just slightly audible. Uh, trying to get the camera microphone to pick it up, you'd have to put the microphone on the top to be able to pick it up, and that's not a fair test. Um, but the, your ears are always going to be different to the way uh, things sound with a microphone anyway, unless you turn the gain right up. Now, performance. We've already said uh, about temps, very down near the bottom of the graph. I think it was 12 degrees cooler than a normal 4090. Uh, when it came to power draw, it went the other way. It was at the top of the graph, about 680 watts. Uh, it was pulling from the wall, but that was the complete system during us using OCCT to uh, put stress on the graphics card itself. And we find it simpler to do a dedicated way like that because there are plenty of, there are a couple of ways I should say that you can just test the graphics card power draw, but it does mean that you've got lots of other stuff hanging out and we test it as you do at home. Um, so uh, sure, you could uh, know the just the graphics card, but with a 13900K and the system as we set it up, it's pulling, you know, just shy of that. Uh, and But we did, uh, bump in the power supply to make sure that we had plenty of amps, plenty of going on, not going to have any issues. Uh, we've got the AX1600i in there delivering all the grunt. Uh, the only weird thing that we've got is a cable mod cable and we've had uh, zero issues with that. And we've just got nice uh, black braid. Oh, so power high but not as high as you might have thought, or at least I don't think that either. <coughs> Performance. We tested everything with 1080p, 1440 and 4K. But I genuinely think if you buy this, you're going to be running uh, a 4K screen. Uh, either that or you're going to be running a 1440p screen uh, with ridiculous frames per second, high refresh rate monitor, the Spandango. One of the things I will say is if you want to click through to the OC3D website, it is brand new. There's a brand new website. You can even look at it on your phone. Uh, if you do look at it on your phone, you can zoom in to the graphs to be able to digest them. We do get some flack about the graphs because there's a lot of information in them, but it's because there's a lot of things we want you to be able to digest with. Uh, we can simplify it, but by simplifying it, it just means we show you less results. So that is up to you. We can still talk about this and tweak things because we have to make them for every video, every review anyway. So uh, we've done all that testing. I'm going to show you the 4K ones. If you'd like to see 1440 or 1080p results, you can head over to the website. We've also tested, where possible, uh, just a normal rasterized run. There's a run with ray tracing where possible. And then if there is ray tracing and it's possible to turn DLS on, we've done that. And then if it's also possible for us to turn frame gen on, we've also done that. All are separate runs. So rasterized one run, ray tracing one run. Ray tracing with DLSS is another run. Ray tracing with DLSS and frame gen is another run. And that's why the graphs, some of them have a few different results in. Now, consistently you will see it at the top because it does just trounce everything. Um, and uh, there are going to be lots and lots of results that we need to show you, but I've not spoken to you about the clock speeds. So, uh, out the box, 2670. 
Uh, if you turn it into OC, C, OC mode, 2700. But that is the boost clock. Then, G, uh, not GPU tweak, GPU boost then takes over, which is just the NVIDIA's way of auto overclocking for you. Now, at that, this point, we were over 2900 megahertz consistently. I could get the card running at 3000 megahertz with the boost um, because the, the NVIDIA software always tries to push it that little bit further. So when you do your overclocking, you change the boost and then the GPU boost then does whatever it can do on top anyway. If you do get the card, please, uh, what you need to do is get GPU tweak and you have GPU tweak open three times. And effectively what you have is the normal readout, so you can see your clock speed, your boost speed, you have another one with uh, the sensors on it and you want that set to uh, average and then another one set to maximum. Because the maximum is important, but the average is more important. -er. It's more important. It is because I can, can get this card boosting to 3100 megahertz and it's still stable and it's still returning good results but they're not as good as if it runs if you have the overclock slightly lower because gpu boost will keep trying to push and if you offset it still trying to do the roughly the same sort of amount and effectively what you can do is it still looks stable and it's like oh i'm running 3100 megahertz this is amazing but the performance will drop off so uh, be careful though for me the average clock is the one that you want to watch once you get a plateau with the average clock that's where you want to stop uh, and because otherwise if you do keep pushing the average will come down and that means overall your performance will tank as well and this is something that i've spoken about many times in reviews previous with the this it's no different volts didn't cure it extra power didn't cure it uh, and talking about volts, there was no way to undervolt it either. Uh, it was basically positives only. Maybe they've decided that it didn't need it, or it was already running quite fast, and the, it wouldn't have brought anything to the table like it might have done with a standard clocked card. So even more uh, games results. They were all consistently running top of the graph. Uh, it, it was just a very strong performing card. Um, now, you'd kind of want it to for this, but it's still only a 4090 underneath the hood. It's a 4090 with plenty of power, plenty of cooling, uh, high quality components. It's a 4090 with a very strong design ethos. They've thrown everything that they can at it, but that's what a matrix should be. Now, the yes, the matrix, I already know that people are going to be shouting at the screen about the price. And sure, it isn't going to be for everyone. They never, ever have been. And if it's not for you, uh, then maybe you need to be thinking to yourself, but let's just get excited about the fact that they tried. Because they don't need to. They could just go and make a few more Strixes. Uh, but what they're trying to do is bring that Goldilocks product to the market to say, hey, this is what we can do with a 4090 if we want. Now, the one thing that I've seen, uh, which surprised me somewhat, was there was no numbers or anything like that on it. Uh, because I can't imagine that they're going to be producing these in an amazingly high volume, but they've also not limited it either. So this kind of suggests that uh, there's not gonna be a 100 or a 1,000 of them and there might be a few more. I don't know. There's been no sign of that. I do, however, know that for press samples, uh, in the UK right now, there are two, and I have this one, and Mr. Matt Lee has the other one, which does mean that Mr. Matt Lee is going to be doing a crazy, beautiful, pretty build because his work is uh, outstanding. You know, just visually, it is just on point. His builds are always very tidy. Sadly, with a system that I have to review lots and lots of many graphics cards in, it's a little bit more difficult for me to be able to uh, achieve that. But I've done the best that I possibly can do in what we would call a static uh, bench rig. Anyway, my thoughts on the uh, Matrix. 
yes, it is crazy priced. Um, you're either going to uh, love it for what they've done or you're going to hate it because you think that they're profiteering and stuff like that. And that is your own opinion. That is completely down to you. I'm on the offensive. I actually like the fact that they've bothered. I actually love the fact that they've introduced liquid metal. The fact that, we, yes, we've got an AIO, but it means it's easier for people to fit at home. I like the fact that the cables are all tidied up. Um, do I think that the hoses are a little bit long? Yeah, I do think that the hoses are a little bit long, uh, but they do twist on the ends, and uh, the fact that they've covered all the cables up is all really nice. Software could do with a little bit of uh, work, but it always had been. It always did with the other cards as well, so that's no different. Um, <sighs> completely lost my train of thought, but it's also because I was trying to think to myself and trying to avoid saying I want a white one, but it goes without saying, I'd love to see this in white. I love a white graphics card. But at the same time, the bit that I was troubling myself with is I genuinely know that the white cards don't sell as many as the black cards. And they cost so much more to uh, produce as well. So if you did make this white, it would be well over £3,000. And I think the, the world would implode about it. The critical thing, and I know it's something that everyone at home is going to want me to say, is... Is the performance you get from this over a normal Strix worth the extra money? And if you want to put it like that, then no, it's not. But it also misses the point entirely that it's not just trying to be a value for money upgrade. It is about the fact that they uh, have done something different. They've just brought something extra special to the table and the temperatures are brought right down. The performance is very strong, although if you put it into percentages, the money that you put into it is going to, you know, it's not, the ratio isn't there, but it looks incredibly special. It is still, despite the fact there isn't a uh, 333 out of a thousand on the box, it's still not going to be a run of the mill card. And this is going to be for hardware enthusiasts. This is going to be a card that you're going to buy, not because you need it, but because, no, not be, because you need it, you want it, you want it, you need it. It's just one of those things that you just have to have in your life. Yes, most of us are going to have to put it on a credit card, sign up to a loan agreement, but you're going to be playing with this card. You're going to have years of happy, you know, frames per second fueled. Anyway, I don't want to sell it to you. It looks pretty, it goes well. If you want to whinge about the price, you've missed the point. I have waffled enough. Uh, I'm sad that it has to go back because I would actually love that to go on my desk because I'm just about to build myself a, a Xeon bench, uh, a ben benchmark, a battle station for me to be able to use in the office. And I think that would look beautiful in there, but that's because if the enthusiast in me wants the latest and the greatest thing. And it genuinely hurts that I have to give it back. But I am very grateful that I got given a chance to have an early play with it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the very lengthy old school TTL chatty video. But for now at least, this has been the Asus RTX 4090 Matrix graphics card review. Ding! That's back! Oh! internet cookies at the end and don't forget you can go and uh, have a look at all the other graphs on the website uh, if you want because it's brand new and like subscribe and comment i love you very much thank you